around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. About the lady gay? The lady gay? What about it? You haven't heard her, you wouldn't ask. <laughs> heard what, Doc? Well, uh, I'll walk along with you if you're heading that way. As a matter of fact, I was, but uh, what's all that crowd out front? In due time, Matt. In due time. You know, Doc, there's only one thing that makes you happier than having a secret. That's to collect your coroner's fee. <laughs> you might get a fee out of this, too, before it's over. Well, well no wonder you're all worked up. Good no morning, Mr. Dillon. Chester. You heard about the lady gay? No, Chester, I have not heard about the lady gay. What? He's upset, Chester. He's the only man in Dodge who hasn't. So help me, Doc, if this is one of your practical jokes. Oh, no, no, no. I had nothing to do with it. You'll see. Uh, <laughs> pardon me, please. Will you let me... Yes. yes. Thank you. Will, you. will you pardon me, please? Well, Mr. Dillon? What do you think of it, Matt? Aside from the misspelled words... The Lady Gay Saloon will open up at 8 o'clock tonight with new management and new policy. Everybody welcome. Signed, the new manager, Mamie. A woman. Lately of Kansas City, St. Louis, and Points East. A woman can't run a saloon in Dodge. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Miss Kitty. Well, I... I've been doing pretty well at it. Well, yes, ma'am, but what I meant was... I, I... You're not a woman, Kitty. You're an institution. <laughs> Well, that might be a compliment, Matt, but I'm not quite sure. Well, uh, the reason you manage is because you've you got respectable patrons like me and Matt and uh, yeah, Chester. I'm not sure I'd call any one of you respectable. Oh, now, Kitty. You, you three know anything about this Mamie person? Nobody ain't even sorry, Miss Kitty. She, she must have come to town last night sometime. Hmm. Probably some frilly little piece of Boston fluff. You sound jealous, Kitty. Why should I be jealous? There's enough business in town for both of us. Well, satisfy your curiosity and then come on over the long branch for a decent drink. Well, now, Kitty, I'll have to wait and, until I get a look at her. Yeah, and you just might lose our trade, you know. I kind of doubt that. I'll see you boys later. <laughs> Goodbye, Bye, Kitty. Kitty. <laughs> Say, Mr. Young, if this Mamie is the new manager, what went with Herman Bleeker? I don't know. Maybe he sold the saloon to her, but he sure didn't say anything about it yesterday morning. That's right, and I seen him over the delivery sale just afternoon, showing off one of them fancy vests he's always ordering. He never said a word about it. Well, you know that little Pop and Jay? He, he's flighty. It, it probably happened suddenly. Too sudden, Doc, even for Herman. Say, come to think of it, I ain't saw him all morning, and he's usually strutting up and down Front Street, preening himself like a powder pigeon. <laughs> he's probably upstairs there, sleeping in... Getting ready for the opening night. <laughs> we gonna be here for opening night, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester, I think maybe we better. I was talking to the bartender earlier, Matt, asking him what she looks like. And he said if he told me, I, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> the fellow I'd like to talk to is Herman Bleeker. Howdy, Dr. 
stranger. Uh oh, oh yes. It's... Welcome to the lady game. I'm Mamie, the new owner. <laughs> Jumping, gee, a hundred and ninety pounds if she weighs an ounce. Oh, that bartender was right. I, I wouldn't have believed it. Boys, looks like we're going to be doing business together. So let's get things straight right in the beginning. Now, in the first place, the minute you stick your foot inside that door, you're on my stomping ground. I'm the boss of the shebang, and don't ever forget it. When I tell anybody to hop, he hops. Is that clear? I aim to give the squarest deal in town. All the liquor here is going to be aged over 30 days, and the dancing girls aged under 30 years. <laughs> the liquor's straight. The girls are graceful. There's only four races in every deck, and the cards only read from the front side. You'll get a fair shake for your money, but there ain't gonna be no fantasy. Well, friend, I know. And another thing. I know it has happened. Mister! Before. I'm talking. So am I, you old battle axe. Excuse me, boy. He paid for his drink, Finnegan? Yes, ma'am. All right, you all I have <laughs> saying, boys, I just won't stand for no fandango. Maybe some of you figured I was wearing a six-shooter for decoration. Well, just cast your eyes on that ace of spades that got tacked up on the back wall. You ready? Now! Did you see that draw, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, and she got the card, too. <laughs> All right, boys. The first one's on the house. And it's the last free one you'll get. The only credit I give is for funeral expenses. Rally up, boys! Well, Mr. Dillon? I'll be right back, Chester. I want to have a talk with her. Mamie? You're the marshal, huh? That's right. My name is Dylan. <laughs> Proud to shake your hand, Marshal. Oh, thanks, Mimi. Uh, welcome to Dodge. Mighty decent of you to express the sentiment, Marshal. I reckon you won't get much business around the lady gay. I'll take care of any need from the lips, Doc. That'll be quite a change. The boys used to push Bleaker around every now and then. Ah, runty little prairie dog. I, uh... I didn't know that he was planning to sell. He must have made his mind up in a hurry. Huh? Yeah, I made him an offer and he took it. Just like that. Uh-huh. Found himself some new living quarters, I suppose. Oh, yeah, he, uh, he moved out last night. I see. There, uh, were a couple of things I wanted to talk to him about. Well, now, I'm afraid he left town, Marshal. I think he said something about taking the train to, uh, St. Louis. Oh, Oh, that's too bad. I, uh, I'd like to have seen him. Well, uh, I'll probably be dropping in now and then, Miss Mamie. Sure. Any time, Marshal. Did you find out anything, Mr. Dillon? Let's get out of here, Chester. You coming, Doc? You sure. Alive, I sure would hate to meet her in the dark. Yeah, she's got a voice like a bull buffalo. Ain't it awful? Just itches your ear something fierce. Doesn't it? Uh, what'd she say about her, man? She says she thinks he left town. Hmm. Now, Chester, I want you to check all the rooming houses and the hotels along Front Street. I'm going to the railroad station and the stage lines, and I'll meet you back at the office, huh? Aren't you? And, Doc... I think Herman keeps a horse over the livery stable. Would you uh, look into that for me? Oh, sure, I'm happy. You know, Mr. Dillon, she's an awful straight shot. Yeah, Chester. I know.
You here, Matt? Yeah, come on in, Doc. Well, Bleaker's horse is still over the stable. Uh, he didn't tell them anything about leaving. He didn't leave, Doc. Mimi came in on the 9 o'clock train last night. Only one train out after that around midnight, and he wasn't on it. And he didn't buy a ticket on the stage. Well, what did I tell you? Matt, that's so. Uh, Mr. Don, Manuel wants to see you. Oh? Oh, come on in, Manuel. Gracias, Senor Dillon. What's on your mind? I was at the railroad depot when I hear you ask about Senor Bleeker. Yeah, go on. Senor, last night I see something which is strange. Oh? I come home very late, uh, one hour, two hours before dawn. <laughs> I was uh, visiting a friend, you understand? <laughs> yeah, I understand. So I, I walk home in, in much hurry, you know. It's very dark, senor. Well, no, all at once I see this lantern in the arroyo behind the Lady Gay Cantina. A uh, lantern? Huh? I'm thinking to myself, what is this? Huh? So I wait. And this lantern keeps coming toward me. And when it's closed, this woman who I have never seen no one like her, this Mimi, what a scare. What was she doing in the arroyo? Quien sabe, but she's carried something in her hand. Well, what was it? A shovel, senor. <laughs> Finding anything? Uh, there's something here, Doc, but I can't quite... Chester, hold the lantern over here, huh? Uh, yes, sir. I found something here, but I can just get it loose. Lantern all right? Can you see it? Yeah, that's fine, Chester. Yeah, yeah I got it. Yeah. That's yeah, a boot. Uh, here's another one. Oh, yes. And all that fancy stitching. Matt, those are his. I've seen them on him. Yeah, so have I. Yesterday, in fact. Here, take them, Chester. There's a bundle of some kind here. A bundle? The body? No, no, it's clothes, I think. I'll have a look. Well, that's all there is, too. The hole doesn't go any deeper. There's hard pan on the bottom. Here, hold the lantern down, Chester. Let me get this unwrapped. I'm not sure about that coat, Mr. Dillon. Bottom like that around town. Yeah, I know. Take a look at this vest. Oh, yes. Yes, that's Herman's. Yeah, nobody else in Dodge City would wear a thing like that. Yeah. And from the looks of it, he won't be wearing it again either. How you coming, Doc? Now, don't, don't rush me, man. I... I haven't made one of these blood tests in years. And if you ask me, I don't see the use of making one now. But we'll see here. And pour the precipitants into here. Yes. Matt, what other kind of blood could it be except human? Doc, I only want to be sure, that's all. All right. All right, then. Uh, let me see here. Five drops of the sulfate. And, uh, yeah, well, you sure look uncomfortable, Matt. How would you like to try arresting Mamie, Doc? It's not my job to arrest her. You're lucky. And now we'll shake this up and warm it a bit. Uh, one thing, Mr. Dillon. Shooting at a mark not the same as a gunfight. Maybe she won't resist. You really believe that, Chester? No, she. Well, there's still a chance we may be going off half-cocked here. That blood could have got on Herman's vest a dozen different ways. We'll soon see. Ah, now then, a couple of drops of reagent. And look for the color change. Turn up that lamp a little bit, will you, Chester? Yeah, no. Well, well, Doc? Too bad, Matt. It's human blood. <laughs> I thought we were going to look to Lady Gay and talk to Mamie. Yeah, so nice. She'll keep. She's not going anywhere. 
It looks cut and dry to me, Matt. You might not if you were in my shoes. Come on in the office. You know, Mr. John, I talked to that barkeep, Finnegan. He said when he showed up this morning to open the saloon, this woman was inside waiting for him, told him to come back at 8 o'clock tonight. She never seen no sign of Herman Beaker. <laughs> well, there's another nail in your coffin, Matt. You know, Doc, I ought to deputize you and take you along to help me. I will not lift a hand in anger against a woman. I just keep thinking that we can still be wrong. Yeah, especially that woman. Suppose Herman hurt himself some way. How? And he wanted to get away by himself and recuperate. Or And suppose he didn't want anybody to know about it. Why? So he decided to stay with some friend. Who? And maybe... Oh, all right, all right. But it could have been something like that. Well, even if something had happened to him, Mamie may have not had anything to do with it. But then how come she's running the Lady Gay, calling herself the new owner? Oh, okay, Doc, you're probably right. Come on, Chester, let's get it over with. Take her in, Chester. Maybe she'll talk when she's arrested. But I've got to get that gun away from her somewhere. My thing is not going to be easy. That's got to be done. I've never drawn a gun on a woman yet, and I'm not going to start now. You got a plan? Yeah. Come on. Yes, sir. Well, Marshal, mighty glad you dropped back in. Just wondering how you were getting along, Mamie. Like a kid with two tongues and an all-day sucker. Oh, did you find that little weasel Herman Bleeker? I, uh, I thought you told me that he left town. Well, I was just guessing, Mr. Dillon. He said something about planning to. Here, step up and have a shot of poison. Uh, no, thanks. As a matter of fact, I came back here for a particular purpose. You see, Chester and I have a bet on. We do? What kind of bet, Marshal? Well, it was that shooting trick of yours, hitting the center of that playing card. Oh, Chester figures it was nothing but luck. So he's betting me that you can't do it five times in a row. <laughs> well, now, we'll soon settle that. The card's still up there. Stand aside, boys. Hey, look out. Mamie's gonna limber up a shooting iron. All right. There's one. A couple of them. You're doing fine so far. Up there, boys. All dead center so far. Three down and two to go. That's four. And one more to. Oh, yeah. What's the matter? What are you stopping now for? I got some rules I go by, Marshal. One of them's never to fire my last shot and leave my gun empty. I see. Well, that's a pretty good idea. Sorry to lose your bet for you, Marshal. I just guess you're not a gambler, Miss Mamie. Who says so? I'll take a fair bet at even odds any day of the week and twice in Philadelphia. Oh? Well, in that case, I'll make you one. I got a pretty fair gun here. Or at least I thought so until I saw yours in action. I'd say yours is every bit as good as mine. Then how about a bet, huh? Your gun against mine. One cut for high card. Well, uh... Well, it's, of course, all right with me if you'd rather back out. Who's backing out? You got yourself a bet, Marshal. Finnegan? Yes, ma'am? Shuffle up the deck. Yes, Miss Mamie. If it's a batter of fight, Mamie never backs out. Hey, you are, Miss Mamie. Now, who goes first, Mr. Dillon? Ladies, always. All right. If your friend Lester will cut them for us once. Uh, uh, Chester. Uh, never mind. Cut the card. Yes, ma'am. Now, let's see what we've got. Well, jack of spades, that's not bad. <laughs> Pretty good, Marshal. Bloody good enough to beat anything. Oh. King of diamonds. All right. I'm beat fair and square. 
So won yourself a gun. Thanks. Here, Chester, will you take it? Uh, now the handcuffs. Hey, well, what's the... Maybe you're under arrest. Well, of all the sidewind and double cross and backhand... Maybe and you're going to stay fastened to me until I get you in a cell, so you might as well make the best of it. Why, you And know, as far as but... that's concerned, you'll be safer in jail than out of it once word gets around. People here in Dodge thought a lot of Herman Bleeker. Oh, that little sword off ground That's ball. no excuse for killing him in cold blood. What? You hear him, baby? You killed me. <laughs> Bleaker. Oh, my, this is the biggest night of my whole life to hear somebody finally shut Mamie up and make her like it. What's this all about, Herman? Well, I... I'll tell you what it's all about. This little grub boy ran out on me in Cincinnati three years ago. I've been hunting him ever since. And last night I found him. I wailed the living daylights out of him. Yeah, he looks it. But why did you bury his clothes? Would you want to be married to a man that... Dressed like that? Yeah, she, she pretty near murdered me, Marshal. I've been up there in bed all day, just too bruised and embarrassed to hobble downstairs. <laughs> oh, we've had our ups and downs, Marshal, me and little Herman. But you know how it is. Yeah. Chester, give me the keys to the handcuffs. Yes, sir, I got them right here in the... Maybe they're in... No, I guess they're... Uh... What's the matter, Chester? Well, Mr. Dillon, when we was digging out there, well, I, I, I guess I maybe lost them keys. <laughs> Chester, can't you file that thing any faster? Well, now, you might just as well relax, Mr. Dillon. Took me nearly an hour to get the other off of Miss Mamie's wrist. All right, but hurry it up. Pat, Mamie sent this bottle of whiskey to make the waiting a little easier. Oh, fine. Uh, Chester, let that go for a minute. And, uh, open up the bottle, huh? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Can you imagine it, Doc? Little Herman Bleeker married for years to a woman like that? Oh, oh I don't want to imagine. I get nightmares. <laughs> Here you go, Mr. Dillon. Ah, oh, thanks, Chester. And one for you, Doc. Yeah, thank you. Well, boys, here's to the weaker sex. Whichever one that is. in Hollywood by Norman McDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield with editorial supervision by John Meston. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke.